Okay, uh, either good morning or um, good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are. Just like to welcome you to um, the uh, Q2 2023 results presentation for um, Caledonia Mining. Uh, can we just move on to the presentation team, Morris? Okay, on the call today, there's me, uh, Martin Leomont, Caledonia's chief executive. There's Victor Kapari, who is, as you'll know, um, one of the vendors of the Bilbo's asset. He's an executive director. We've got um, Chester Chester Goodburn, the CFO based in Johannesburg, uh, Dana Roots, also um, this chief operating officer based in Johannesburg, uh, Morris Mason, vice president, uh, corporate development, and um, Camilla, uh, VP group communications. They're both based in the UK. <clears throat> shall we um should we get going so you know without beating about the bush it was another very challenging another very challenging um quarter I, I will as i go through these my comments will be focused on q2 q2 compared to q2 previous years we do for reference show six month numbers there but um i'd prefer to focus just on the just on the quarter so um production um was uh, 18000 18 and a half thousand ounces that includes um, a very disappointing 1,000 ounces uh, from Bilbo, so it's about sort of 17,400 from um, from Blanket. I'll ask Donna uh, and Victor respectively to uh, discuss the um, operational uh, issues facing uh, Blanket and um, Bilbo respectively. Um, pretty much saved by the higher gold price. Um, the higher gold price meant that revenues were uh, broadly level at about 37 million, but gross profit was substantially reduced. Um, down from $18 million in the second quarter of 2022 to just under $11 million for the second quarter of 2023. And that was a combination of um, of higher, very high costs at um, Bilbo's with no commensurate um, revenue. And then at Blanket, the, um, the difficulty Blanket was largely, largely relates to um, uh, higher than expected use of um, electricity. Uh, which gave rise to about a couple of million dollars of extra um, extra expense there. That flowed through into a um, uh, the net profit attributable to, sh to shareholders. Instead of being $11, $11 million profit was half a million dollar loss. And that also flows through in terms of the um, earnings per share. And critically, the uh, net cash net cash flow from operating activities, instead of an inflow of um, 16.7 million, was an outflow of um, 2.2 million. Chester will give us some more information on that um, in a moment. Can we move on, Morris? Again, so by way of summary, production of blanket was below target due to operational issues, which Dana will talk about. Um, I'll just draw your attention to the fact that July, after fairly intensive management um, interventions, uh, July did show a substantial improvement. So 7,800 ounces produced in July, which has given us the, the confidence to reiterate our production guidance for 2023 of between 75,000 and 80,000 ounces of gold. Similarly, costs for the quarter were very high. Um, online cost was over $1,000 an ounce. Um, the bulk of that increase from just under $700 an ounce in the comparable quarter, um, the, much of that increase, 81% of that increase was due to the um, high costs incurred at Bilbo's. And again, I draw your attention to a very strong performance in uh, July, uh, where our online cost came in at um, $715 uh, an ounce, which again gives us comfort that we can stand behind the full year guidance of between $770 and $850 an ounce. Um, having seen the poor performance at, um, at Bilbo's, it will be returned to care and maintenance with effect from the 1st of October. So we've got th a three month notice period with the contractor and it made financial sense to uh, run that contract down rather than terminate immediately. And it, it's it's likely we'll expect we expect to see a modest uh, cash contribution coming from uh, Bilbo's in the third quarter as the stripping ratio um, falls away and we continue to harvest um, gold that's been deposited on the um, on the leach pad. Um, safety has been very disappointing uh, in the quarter and compounded by a, an unfortunate fatality, uh, which we announced um, next week. And so management is taking um, urgent measures to uh, to improve our performance there. On a more positive note, uh, we've seen some good uh, drilling results from Eroica, uh, which we can talk about in a moment. Uh, we raised some money by way of placings in March and April, and um, we've also started the direct export of gold from Zimbabwe um, to a refiner in Dubai, which means that we've cut the, the uh, reserve bank 
out of our US dollar um, uh, revenue stream, which is um, which is uh, uh, sort of optically very good. And there's been some changes at the board, whereas Lee, Lee Wilson stepped down as, um, as a non-executive chairman and has been replaced by um, John Kelly. So in terms of, of safety, I mean, the, the critical thing here is the, um, is the, um, if you, uh, what sort of brings it home is the disability injury frequency rate or the total injury frequency rate. You can see towards the bottom of that table, it has increased from uh, the TIFR has increased from sort of one, uh, about one up to 1.35, 1.36. Now, clearly we are going to have to um, take measures to, um, to address that. A lot of it comes down to um, trying to re-engineer the way people behave in the work environment. We've got a, a clearly set out series of, of rules and procedures for doing pretty much everything. And people just need to adhere to that and stop doing silly things. Um, and so Donna and the rest of the team at uh, Blanket are putting a lot of effort into trying to uh, make people behave in the way they have to behave so they can operate safely. So we, we're not, we don't, um, we don't expect, we don't want to see those safety um, safety uh, statistics stay at that level. Uh, not uh, Bilbo's is included just for um, just for completeness, but there's been no significant um, issues at Bilbo's. So let's move on from that. Okay, can I ask um, Chester, who I'm afraid is is suffering from a bit of a cold, but no doubt he'll manage. Can I ask uh, Chester to take us through the um, the financials? Yes, thank you, Mark. Our revenues are somewhat down from the, the previous half, uh, comparing at the previous quarter as well. That's due to lower ounces produced at the blanket. And um, the, the additional ounces that we produced at a blanket did not increase above those levels. Royalty remained at 5%, still charged at the same rate as the comparable period. And our production cost um, has gone up, but we'll get to the detail of the production cost in a few slides. Depreciation has increased, um, but it's due to a reassessment of useful lives that increased uh, the quarterly depreciation charge by, by $600,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that's due to reassessment of the useful lives of some generators, uh, the jet throw shaft that we do not plan to use now that we've got the, the central shaft um, available, and, um, and some LHDs and generators um, that's been deteriorated um, due to the, the power fluctuations and the bad power we've been experiencing at Blanket. It's been negatively affected by other costs to extend to 14.3 million for the half year. Um, there's about a $7 million swing on the foreign exchange losses. That's a 2.1 million loss for, for the, the, the half year. Uh, it came down from a, a gain of approximately 5 million in the previous um, half. As due to the Zimbabwean dollar that devaluated in the month of, of June, while well, our outstanding from Fidelity in you know, 25% um, has, um, has devalued and, and that caused foreign exchange losses. It's good that we, we do export 75% of our gold. Um, that 75% is not subject to any foreign exchange losses. Also included here is write down of Bulbo's oxides. We've uh, placed that on care and maintenance, as Mark said, and that caused about the additional $850,000 of impairment expenses, all non cash. Tax expense, the effective tax rate is quite high. Um, that's due to the, the Bulbo's losses we've encountered uh, that are ring fenced, that's not deductible against taxable profits or blanket. And that shows a very high tax charge for, for the year uh, to date. Can we move to the next slide? Okay, can I can I suggest um Donna, could you could you just quickly give a, a an overview as to you know, what happened produ production wise in the quarter? Right. First of all, if we look at the top graph. Uh, you can see the grade is uh, um, went up last year, and it peaked um, in quarter four, um, or, or in quarter three, two, three, and then it came down a bit, and it continued con coming down in quarter one and quarter two. We knew that was the case, and um, that was one of the reasons why we installed the extra mill in the plant, 
Um, and that, that mill became operational at the end of last year. Um, and that was the problem this year. If you look at the start, if you look at quarter one there and quarter two, but compared it to last year, it's more or less the same tons that we did. But we had a higher grade last year that helped us, so we had to do more tons. Now, when you're in a build-up phase, and we were building up to 80,000 ounces last year, um, and we pushed very, very hard to get to that. And with that, we changed the GM largest timber, or um, it was removed. And then we signed on a new GM in January this year that started on the mine. And with that, we had also some underground managers that was replaced. Um, so during during this this push to get to 80,000 ounces, the safety culture also went for a loop. And some 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 people lost their jobs because of uh, being negligent as far as safety is concerned. <laughs> now that rolled over into this year. And um, when you build up, you don't have flexibility. The flexibility will come now with our development, especially on 30, 30 and, and 34 level, uh, opening up those areas and then going down to 38 level. Um, and when we started the year, we were slightly behind, especially getting into our higher grade places. Uh, by the end of the, end of the quarter, we, uh, we hope to be in those places. Um, and with that, during quarter two, we, um, as we systematically sorted out the issues and, and got into the right places again, um, then some other issues like, um, you know, bad track work, uh, there's normal operational issues that went for a loop, pushing very hard to get to 80,000 ounces. So again, systematically, we had to fix those issues. And um, it which put us in, in good stead for the third quarter. Um, and we're in the right places and we, we, we're getting the tonnages we need to get to now. And, um, you know, so far the, the third quarter is on track. Um, and the big drive is now, as Mark said, you know, when you push people very hard and they're not achieving, they start taking shortcuts, uh, they ignore safety safety standards and, the, uh, you know, they take chances. And, and unfortunately, that caught up to us from a safety point of view, view as well. And um, we uh, we we um, pulling out the teams, every team in the mine, we started pulling them out and taking them through a behavioral initiative again, just to make sure that they understand because we sign on a, a, quite a couple of new people as well. Remember, we stopped with our previous uh, behavior intervention. Um, we had to stop when COVID started. So we stopped it for 2020 and 2021. Uh, and basically 22, and we're starting now again. And unfortunately, the effect of, of that is showing. So a lot of hard work to, to get to a place where um, we can trust the people when they go on the ground and where uh, the supervisors are not around that they do the right thing. Um, so um, from that point of view, uh, to forward is is more funds at the, at the low grade and, and you know, maintaining annual production of 80,000 80, ounces. Um, and our prediction for the, for this year is still seventy five to to eighty thousand ounces. Good. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Can we can we move on to the next um, the next slide? Um, so, uh, Chester, back to you to talk about production costs. Looking at our costs um, of wages, landed that uh, most reflects uh, reflects uh, inflationary increase in our wages. Consumables last year we experienced high inflationary pressures on our consumable costs. This year we haven't seen that. We've um, seen that the plateau, and uh, we haven't seen the same increase as last year. What's important to note here is that about seventy-five to eighty percent of our costs are are fixed in the short term. So on on an online cost per ounce basis, um, these production numbers do not look so great with uh, lower production. But as we move forward. And as our production increases, like it has in July and so far in August, you can see a, a, a great reduction in our online cost balance. Electricity costs, um, that's 6.4 at a blanket level. That does not reflect the 1.4 million of solar savings uh, due to the solar plant that was commissioned earlier this year. Solar plants working well and saving us money from, uh, from the group perspective. And then we've also initiated a uh, a new agreement with the IUG, the consortium that wheels power into them and allows us to get power at a lower kilowatt per hour rate, uh, rate than what we would get from the utility. 
Uh, kilowatt hour usage, we're looking at that, um, looking to reduce that. So going forward, our power should reflect lower rates than what you see here. And um, and we should come see some more benefit from, from solar. Bobo's oxides, that's now been placed on general maintenance. We see the, the high cost of $7.5 million for the year. It's cost for the by waste stripping that we, we had to perform to, to get to, to the oxides. And we plan to mine the oxides now with the sulfides when these costs can be motivated with, um, with high ounces. On that uh, production cost, uh, on a online cost per ounce basis in the next slide, you can see um, our online cost was negatively affected mostly by uh, the, the oxides production of $317 per ounce. Our power does not reflect the, the solar savings and it doesn't show the full effect of the IEG rates. So going forward, we, we plan to stop the leakage from, from bulbos, reduce that cost, reduce the power cost, the online cost bounds basis, and improve this, this online cost number significantly. From all in standing cost point of view, there's not much more to, to add. That was mostly uh, negatively affected by the bulbos um, cost that we do not expect to continue going forward. On the next slide. Uh, Adam expenses are very much comparable to the previous uh, the comparable quarter. Uh, for the full year, it includes a, a cost of 2.1 million due to the successful completion of, of bulbos, where we had to pay some of our advisors on the successful completion of that. On the next slide, please. Our withholding tax, as said, uh, well, it's our, our total tax charge is very high from an effective tax charge uh, point of view. Our effective taxation rate at a blanket level, however, has remained very much uh, stable from the, the previous quarters. And uh, going forward, if we do not incur the loss of bulbos, our effective tax rate going forward should be, again, between the 30 and 37% range as we've seen in, in, in prior years and prior quarters. Look at the next slide. Here you can see our cash flows. Uh, we generated 4.9 million uh, across the group for the quarter. 8 million was from blankets, so it shows blankets' ability to, to generate cash flows. And that 8 million for the quarter compares to 7.7 .7 million that we generated in July. So it shows that blanket is still a very good asset for cash generating. And uh, and, and when it produces, it's running at full steam, produces a very good sum of cash. Uh, our working capital outflows for the quarter, 4 million of that was due to legacy credit deployments. On net investing in, in capital activities, that's pretty much way to the, the latter part of the year. We'll uh, catch up on some of the, the, the capital spent. And our financing activities includes 15.6 million net of, of expenses and equity raises, 7 million in, in bonds that we've um, issued on the solar bond, and some dividend payments for Q1 and Q2. Looking at the next slide. Our cash balances, um, that has come down on a 40 basis. Um, that's also due to, to the solar bond. We had to spend some money on, on holding the solar bond. We purchased some tar power, we purchased Bulbos and Marley Green. And we expect in the next six to 12 months cash position to improve as we fight for, for all the assets that we acquired. Our cash transfers from Zimbabwe continued normally, and we are not building up any surplus RTGS in Zim. If we look at the next slide. Our balance sheet doesn't tell any new, new stories here. It has changed mostly due to. Uh, the acquisition of the Bulbos. I said our cash balances should have proved now to be paid for all the assets that we acquired. And um, I'm going forward, we foresee better ratios in our, in our balance sheet. Good, and let's, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Chester. So as I've mentioned, July July was a, um, was a, a strong month. So here's the information relating to July that was in the um, MDNA. Um, uh, the grade is 3.6, gold recovery 93.6%, producing uh, just over 7,800 
ounces of gold at a, an annualized rate of, um, of just over of about 93,000 ounces a year with a, a very competitive um, online cost per ounce of $715, which equates, which is comparable to approximately $700 an ounce um, last year. Um, so hopefully we've turned the corner and um, uh, July shows that uh, we should be hopefully be looking for a much better second half of the year than the first half of the year. <clears throat> Can we move on? Earlier on, a few weeks ago, we we, we restarted um, deep level drilling um, in January. We'd had to suspend deep level exploration several years ago because we just didn't have the logistical capacity underground to uh, do ex to do exploration at the same time as doing all the development and the production. So having got um, central shaft um, uh, commissioned, we've now got the capacity to excavate, mine out the uh, the drilling cubbies, and then which which then create, gives the platform for uh, deep drilling. It's fair to say that of the and that currently we've got we've got sort of two two exploration targets. The first target on which we reported and which is which is summarized here is um, at Eroica. Uh, we've just started also now a um, in a second area on the other side of the mine at um, at Blanket. But it's fair to say that the the results that we um, we we got at Eroica pretty much uh, a, a very substantial majority of the holes uh, supplied on the upside in terms of uh, grade and width. And that means that in, um, in due course, hopefully towards the end of the year, uh, we will um, reflect the, the these better better than expected results in terms of a, um, a, new, a new resource statement, which will mean that we're going to be extending the life of the mine uh, and increasing the amount of material that we can access from the existing um, the existing infrastructure at Blanket. At uh, Matapa, we've submitted a uh, an environmental impact assessment, and we will be able to commence. What we call invasive invasive um, drilling activity at um, at Matapa uh, later on in the year. But we've we ESG is becoming an area of increasing um, focus by uh, regulators and um, and investors. Um, it's fair to say that the um, the regulatory environment keeps on keeps on evolving. The SEC apparently is going to get involved. Um, we hear now that um, that's, that's going to be sort of accounting standards dealing with ESG. So, you know, our objective is to um, put in place sustainable business practices that are aligned with our corporate strategy. So we'll do what we have to do to the best of our ability, uh, but we're not um, we're not uh, sort of uh, blazing a trail. Um, we'll do we'll do what we have to do. We. So we just published uh, our most recent ESG report, which sets out a lot of information about the specific projects that we're involved with at the, at the, at the social level. Uh, but just in terms of in terms of a summary on, from an environmental perspective, we've put in place a, a solar plant, which provides about 24 percent of blankets average daily power. I think it works very slightly better than we'd expected, um, which is good. Um, we're currently constructing a new um, compliant tailings facility. The existing tailings facility is now uh, pretty much exhausted. Um, so we, we're, we're going to spend about $25 million over the next few years uh, putting in a new new facility, which is, and the expense of that is because it has to be uh, double lined with clay and um, and plastic. And that will, that will support us for the next sort of 12 to 14 years at a production rate of about um, 800,000 800, tonnes a year. So upfront expenditure, but then once we're through that, the uh, is built and we've got it. Um, in terms of social, we've got 34% local ownership, um, including the employees in the community. Uh, the community paid off its um, outstanding sort of um, loans to us. And the picture there shows the... Um, our VP in uh, Zimbabwe, um, Caxton Mangesi, handing over a, a substantial check to the uh, to the local to the local people. Um, and in terms of governance, we comply with with all the requirements, the relevant jurisdictions. I think, I think we're we're very um, we're very sort of we're, we're where we need to be in terms of compliance. If this area interests you, there's a load of information in the ESG report. Shall we move on? Okay, so in terms of outlook, the uh, the focus really is on maintain getting getting blanket running sweetly again and um, achieving a targeted range production range of seventy five to eighty thousand um, ounces. We'll continue uh, to do our deep level drilling at blanket with the objective of 
initially of upgrading inferred mineral resource to a higher higher confidence level and then thereafter then looking for extensions to the existing ore bodies at depth uh, which we can then make a decision in due course as to if we find something how do, how do we commercialize it we've we've commenced work on the um, feasibility studies at, uh, at Bilbo's and we're looking as I've, as I've said before we're looking at how we can um, sort of balance uh, growth with minimizing uh, dilution and therefore optimizing uh, the net present value uplift for a Caledonia share. Um, and so we hopefully, uh, and we also expect to start um, exploring at Matapa later in the year. So I think I think that's the formal presentation finished. So maybe maybe we can open this to um, to questions, Camilla. Yeah, if anyone has a question, can I ask you just to to raise your hand and we can um, and we can unmute you. Let's see. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, uh, okay. So I just had a question regarding the dividend policy. Um, in a scenario where the production and cash like continue to disappoint, what is the likelihood that that would be maintained at fourteen cents per share? Well, the that's that's one question. The other question is, what do we do with the dividend in terms of um, of the very substantial investment requirements um, right. for, for Bilbo's? And our, we've always said that the our policy is to pay a dividend, uh, but we've also again said that uh, whether we maintain the dividend depends on a view about sort of capital allocation, and um, and you know it's not just affordability. It's is it is it will it be the right thing to do as we go forward to continue to pay dividend, given the fact that you know the money we pay out in dividends is money we'd have to raise to fund the Bilbo's um, the Bilbo's project. So that's all part and parcel of the work that we're doing at the moment relating to how to commercialize um, Bilbo's. So if if the, the idea was the, the where you started from, um, the idea always was that we would we would our dividend policy wasn't or our dividends weren't formally pegged to performance as you as you as you probably be aware. We never said, you know, Q2 or eight in a quarter, a quarter's production, quarter's profit was this, therefore the dividend is that. No, we never did that. Um, so there was no clear correlation between the two. And frankly, given the fact that we can see um, a substantial improvement in the operating performance right now, that that itself would not be a reason for cancelling the dividend. Um, the, the bigger issue really comes to how are we going to fund um, Bilbo's? Right. Uh, I just have a few more questions. Can I get through those or? Yeah, are yeah. They Oh, okay, cool. Um, so in part, some of the electricity costs at Blanket rose because of extended use of Jethro and number four. Um, can I ask what, uh, what is stalling the transition to central shaft? Uh, I saw like in the MDNA, there was like commissioning problems with the oil power systems. And uh, can you maybe add some color to that? Yeah, Donna, would you, would you like to pick that up? Well, it's actually twofold. Um, <clears throat> When we, uh, when we uh, equipped uh, Central Shaft in the beginning, first year, last year, we only did uh, waste through Central Shaft. And then at the end of the year, we started doing grief as well uh, at Central Shaft. And then this year is by the end of the year that 50% of our reef will go through Central Shaft and 50% will go through Four Shaft. And as you migrate towards Central Shaft, that, that will happen over the next two to three years. Um, then you will you will put uh, eventually uh, four shaft as a stand by shaft uh, almost in care of maintenance the same with Jethro, but at the same time <clears throat> um, there's a lot of white area still above 750, that right? because during the sinking of central shaft and having uh, limited waiting capacity we had to target our um, our development waste development uh, you know where we knew we're going to find a uh, return on our investment. And um, as we, as we've got more working capacity now, there are certain areas above 750 that we're targeting and opening up. And uh, that's sort of bonus areas. So we might get to a point where uh, we actually find extra stuff and we already found extra stuff above 750, which will extend the life, for example, of a, of a, a, a four shaft. 
because there are certain areas that you can only waste the, the reef tons to waste tons through, through pawn shafts. Other areas, like on the Eroica side, um, that we can go take above 750, we can take uh, uh, through central shaft. Um, so that's why it's not clear cut when we're going to when we're going to stop for shop, when we're going to stop Jethro. It's all dependent on what we what we find find as we explore more. Um, and then also this year when we started with the solar, um, it was it was a lot of rain this year, and and even even last week we had rain at Danker. So it's play, playing a bit of havoc with our solar um, uh, electricity that we generate as well. And uh, using it for the first year, hopefully next year we can budget better and get a better feel for what we will get from solar. But in, but in general, solar, solar, is, solar is performing in plan. I mean, what Dan, what Dan is saying is that when you have when you have rainy days and cloudy days, uh, the solar doesn't work quite so well in those days. Now, now blanket is is fortuitously located in an area of, of good sunshine, but you know, raining raining in a blanket in August is pretty much on the. <laughs> I'm afraid that's what happened earlier on this week. And as as we're going forward, I mean, when 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 you get uh, over overcast conditions, then you've got to run generators to supplement the solar. Um, and going forward, the answer to that is to, to install a couple of batteries to to have that. When when you you know the clouds come over and your solar pond uh, generation drops, that 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 is kept uh, stable. Hmm. So do you have some further questions? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, so let me just get to them here. Okay, so it seems I just wanted to ask about some of the underground technical expertise. It seems like um, a lot of the infrastructure issues have been addressed, but it seemed like there were also some of like human capital issues that need like job skills, training, something like this. Uh, can you just add some clarity to if that is a growing issue or is it okay? Yeah. Donna? You know, you know, we were lucky um, that if you if you look at the workforce at Blanket, uh, very stable, it was very stable and a lot of experience. And as we started growing and, and building up, we had to sign on new skills. Now, that's always a, a danger when you sign on new people. Not not every every new person you sign on is the correct fit. So you've got to, you know, get that correct fit. Some people are fit in, so, some don't. And with that also, you've got to be very strong on the culture you want to to uh, have, and what you will allow and will not allow. Um, and and with that, we also actually saw that uh, the people we lost uh, during, the, especially last year, uh, increased because of of the, you know what I explained now. And we've got to get to a point where we grew our people by about five hundred people, uh, you know. And since we started building up by more than a thousand people. You've got to get that people put in into the culture and the way we do things and what we allow. And you know, that take takes two years about to, to get that culture right and then we'll start stabilizing um and, and you know get a, a, a well experienced workforce. But currently we've got a very good mix of very, very experienced people. And you know, the benefit of, of building up was we actually managed to get some younger people in because our workforce was actually getting quite old. So it's there's positives and negatives, but you see it everywhere when you where you sign on new people and you've got to train and coach them to get uh, into the right uh, culture and, and the way you want to do things. Right. Okay. I just have I think two more questions. Okay. So Mutapa, with the first phase, it sounds a little bit similar to the Bobo's first phase. Um, would that be an accurate characterization or? And what gives you confidence if it is that it will work better this time around? Given uh, how the... well, well, I mean, um, so when you say we're going to go hunting for oxides at um, at Matapa, is that is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah, we may we, we may actually decide we we may actually decide not to go hunting for oxides given the um, given the, the poor experience. So we may actually just focus on the um, on the sulfides, which is which is the the main reason, which is the reason for actually. Um, acquiring the topper in the first place right okay i certainly, uh, don't, I certainly don't want a repetition of what we've experienced um, at the bilbo's oxide project thank you very much right right okay and then my last one is just maybe something that i'm unclear on is um so in the mdna there was 
it was cited that part of the FX losses were due to a three week delay in the settlement of RTSG receivables. Um, like previously, the, it was said that within two weeks, like it was okay and you would receive all settlement from SGR. So is that change only due to the devaluation of the, the leave, rapid? I'll leave, I'll leave Chester to, um, if Chester could ask, ask, answer that, I'd be, it'd be good. But um, I'll just point out to you, there is a su su suspicious coincidence between the really very, very rapid devaluation of, um, of the RTGS over a three week period. And at the same time, a, the the uh, the pushing out of the um, of the receivable period, which has since normalised. I would just I would just leave that out there. That there, there does appear to be a, a suspicious coincidence there. But Chester, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it is suspicious. I mean, I mean the the rate is devalued by about three, well, devalued about three times over that period of three weeks. Normally, we receive our our cash from Fidelity within two weeks. Uh, they've um, been paying us regularly over the, the two weeks. 75% uh, of our gold now goes um, to outside of Fidelity to a company called LATI. We receive just about all our, of our cash within two, two to three days of delivering the cash to them. Uh, so we haven't seen those long delays again after June. And um, so far they've been Fidelity has been paying um, within that two period. So, mm -hmm. so far, it's been going well. It was only that little bump that uh, cost us a lot of epic uh, losses. Okay, cool. That covers me. Anything else? Uh, no, thanks. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. One any any further questions from anybody? I don't think there are any more questions. There was another hand up, but it's um, but it's gone back down. So I think that's it. Okay, should we just give it a few minutes just in case anybody has any second thoughts? Um, no. Okay. Well, on that, on that, well, thank you, thank you for attending. Um, difficult quarter, as I said. Signs of improvement in July, and hopefully we'll 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 do this again at the end of Q three, and there'll be a more cheerful, a more cheerful presentation. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>